Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to do some examples of uh, what we call line balancing or work balancing, where you take a number of tasks and look at the efficient way uh, to bundle them or put them together so that you can uh, assign tasks to individual per people or workstations to get uh, to get a process finished. Uh, in, the last, uh, in the last set of slides that I posted uh, we talked about tack time and line balancing and I said I would do uh, some more sort of fulsome examples and that's what I'm doing this morning. Uh, first let's go through a couple of examples. So this is uh, line balancing or work balancing. I am trying to use a, a darker uh, and wider uh, pen today to see if that makes it a little bit easier to read. Uh, it means I'll probably have more slides uh, to, to go through. Uh, I will not, because I don't have a scanner at home, put these exact slides up, but I will put my notes up that I've used in past years and everything that I write down will be on that. So the first thing is let's do an example. Uh, I'm going to take a quick stop and look and make sure that this is showing up. Yep, it is. It, it seems to be uh, more visible than the pen was. So uh, we have uh, output at 80 units per day. And uh, we have eight hour shift of which seven is available for production and these are just general parameters that you would be given uh, five operations or tasks with times and I'm running into my tripod here so I'm going to do the best I can 1.0 0 0.8, 2.4, 2.5, and 1.4. So these are the times in minutes or, or hours or whatever, but I'm going to assume minutes of each of these, uh, of each of those tasks. So then the first question, and in this case, we don't have any precedence relationships. The next, the next one that I do will have precedence relationships. So the first question is, what is the tact time that you'll remember for, that you'll remember from the slides? And tact time is equal to total work time divided by units required. So this sets the tack time, or is another way to call it, it's also, you could also call it the cycle time. This is the time that you would have to uh, finish each item within the time constraint that you have. So we have 80 units per day, and we have uh, seven productive uh, shift, uh, seven productive hours. So within that, it tells us how, how, uh, how we have to have a cycle time at each station that is no greater than the tack time or we won't be able to achieve the uh, output that we want. Uh, so the tack time is equal to, and I'm going to break again here and just check that I'm still on uh, the screen because uh, as you recall during class I would run out of space and I'd have to move it. So I have 7 hours times 60 minutes divided by 80 units equals 5.25. So that means within, uh, in order for us to make 80 units in a day, we have seven hours and because this is in minutes we have to make it consistent in minutes. Uh, that means that every five and a quarter minutes we have to have a unit of production or uh, we won't meet our objectives. So uh, that means one person can't do all of that uh, because uh, so we need at least 
uh, two people or two stations. So let's uh, take a look because it's more than one. So let's take a look at how we would calculate that. Part B then is how many workers or stations needed equals total operation time required divided by tack time or or cycle time and that is equal to 1.0 plus 0 0.8 plus 2.4 plus 2.5 plus 1.4 5.25 and that is equal to 1.54 so we need at least 1.54 workers or stations where we would assign sort of combinations of tasks uh, and uh, uh, in order to make the cycle time or tack time. We always, always, so if this was 1.25, the number would still be equal to two. We always round that up because in this instance, if we round down because it's uh, 1.25, we, we wouldn't be able to do it. So any number above a whole number, we always have to round up. So that is a simple first example. Let's go through the types of questions we might have to look at uh, in order to uh, in in order to build on that, or in order to to develop a work system that works. I apologize a little bit for the background noise. the The dogs are interested in my recording and are coming in and shaking and stuff. We're working on it. Uh, uh, we're doing the best we can in the, the homework situation. So here's a question. We have an appliance manufacturer. This works just as well for services that has developed a new oven and is structuring the production process. We require 80 ovens in an eight hour day. Assembly requires seven tasks. And in this case, we're going to have tasks that uh, not only have times, but we have a sequence of time, which may, which we didn't have in the last question, a sort of sequence of tasks, so that one thing has to happen before the other can, a little bit like project management. So if you look, then I'm just going to give you the information, tasks A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, time in minutes for each tasks is one, two, three, two, four, one, two, and uh, task must follow, which is precedence A, B. B, C and D, E and F. And those precedence relationships are the exact same as, as we had uh, uh, in project management. So that gives us the, uh, the, the basics. So what kinds of things do you have to do in order to structure that process? Uh, these, these sort of putting people into uh, the right uh, combinations of tasks uh, so that we can get that done in the time we want. So here are the steps we're going to go through, uh, and these are questions that I could ask. I could I could give you any. I could ask a whole question like this. Uh, this question has uh, 
several steps. I, I haven't counted them, uh, but uh, I could ask any or, or all of these types of questions if I gave you the information. So, uh, the first question is, uh, draw the precedence diagram. And so in that circumstance, because we're not doing project management, I don't always do a start uh, and finish time. Uh, you know, A had no precedence. Uh, and you can put times either in the circle or outside of the circle. B followed A, took two minutes. C and D both followed B. E followed both C and D. Remember, precedent relationships means B can't start till A finishes, neither C or D can start till B finishes, and now E can't start till both C and D are finished. So that's just the sequence within which these uh, things have to happen. So all I did was took a look at these precedence relationships and the time that each one of them takes to complete. Second question. What is the bottleneck task or tasks of the layout? if management assigns one worker per task. So if, if we don't sort of group some of these together to try and make it more efficient, uh, we, we would have a bottleneck at one of them. Uh, what is the hourly capacity of the layout. So in this case uh, we would have E which takes four minutes is the task that takes the longest. So it becomes the bottleneck. If I was working on A and someone else was working on B and, and C and D and E and F and G and so on, uh, we would see uh, uh, we would see that the person doing task E would be busy all of the time and uh, these other people would have uh, extra time where they're not working uh, and E would be the one that would slow things down. So E is the bottleneck and it takes the most time. and it has the lowest capacity. So capacity is the inverse essentially of, of the time it takes. So capacity is equal to 60 minutes per hour divided by four minutes per unit is equal to 15 units per hour. So right now, if we had individuals on each of those, we would have a capacity of 15 minutes, uh, 15 units per hour, because this person could only make 15 units, uh, and uh, uh, and these other people can make more, but because uh, this person. Uh, uh, has to finish, these people can't finish the item, uh, and so the entire capacity of the system is 15 units per hour. So, uh, next question. What is the cycle time for this operation. So the cycle time or tact time is 
eight hours per day times 60 minutes per hour, which gets us to common units, divided by 80 units is equal to six minutes per unit. So that means in order to achieve the 80 units a day we want to do, uh, we have uh, six minutes per unit to get it done. Uh, if we had individuals, uh, uh, if we had individuals, uh, we would be able to get that done because the bottleneck would be at four minutes. But we're also trying to structure this so that we get it done uh, efficiently and minimize the degree to which people are uh, not working. Minimize the, the unutilized time. So the next question then becomes, what is the minimum number of workstations to achieve the target? So if we want to produce one every six minutes, So then, uh, how? Uh, what is the minimum number of workstations? So rather than saying uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven individual workstations, can we put some of those tasks together and uh, achieve a higher degree of uh, efficiency? So what we're looking at is what is the minimum number? We, we, the minimum number is the theoretical ideal. We don't all we're, we can't always achieve it because of precedence relationships and things like that. But this gives us a guideline, a benchmark. So then, the total time per oven is equal to 15 minutes, which is simply the total of the individual times, right? So if you go back to this. That's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2. So that is the total manufacturing time per unit. Now, because we've got workstations, uh, we can get it down to this 6 minutes per unit, but the total amount of time is, uh, is 15, so that the minimum number of workstations is equal to 15 divided by 6 is equal to 2.5. So the minimum number of workstations is three stations. So we need, in order to do this 15 minutes of manufacturing and get one out every six minutes, we need a minimum of three stations uh, to get that done. So <clears throat> we've then established the basic parameters and now we get to the design function uh, which looks at uh, uh, how might we get this done? So there are two questions here. The first is assign tasks to workstations and F, what is the capacity of each station? And what is the capacity of the process? So if I go back to uh, to this, I know I have to have at least three stations. I may have to, because of precedence relationships, do more. Uh, uh, and I can't put A and G together because there are steps that have to happen. So what we're doing is grouping things that work in sequence that one person or one group of people could do at a workstation. So in this circumstance, uh, I, I know I can't have uh, more than six minutes at a specific group uh, because that's our, if we have greater than six, we won't meet our